Chapter 7, Stoichiometry of Chemical Reactions. We'll begin with section 7.1, Writing and Balancing Chemical Equations. So we've touched on this a bit in this course, but just to clarify, when we're looking at chemical equations, the reactants are, well, quite simply the things that react, the starting materials, they are on the left side of the arrow. Products are the things that are produced, the ending materials, and they are on the right side of the arrow. Now when we are writing chemical equations, we've talked about these a little bit before, but coefficients. Coefficients, it's that number in front of a chemical formula, and it's used to describe the relative amount of substances in the reaction. And again, if, it, if the coefficient is one, it is typically omitted. So in this example, this is the combustion reaction of methane with oxygen gas to form carbon dioxide and water. So we have unwritten coefficients of one here, meaning we've just got one molecule of methane, one molecule of carbon dioxide. Here we've got two molecules of oxygen gas and two molecules of water. Now you notice there that I use the phrase molecule. So that, that's typically, or that's, off, that's often what we use. But specifically in this chapter, we're gonna focus on using the word mole instead because that coefficient, it works both ways. We could describe this as one molecule, two molecules, one molecule, two molecules, like I did in the previous slide. But what's a little more useful with stoichiometry and with you know macro scale reactions is to use the word mole. So I could just as easily say one mole of methane reacts with two moles of oxygen gas to make one mole of carbon dioxide and two moles of water. Now it's also important to note here that this ratio is the same regardless of the actual amounts. So if I mix one and two moles of one mole of methane or one molecule of methane with two molecules of oxygen gas, I'll get one molecule of carbon dioxide and two molecules of water. If I look at this down below, let's say I combined three molecules of methane with six molecules of oxygen gas, I get three molecules of carbon dioxide and six molecules of water. So now the overall number of reactants and products is bigger, but the ratio is the same. It's still a one to two to one to two ratio, regardless of the actual amount. Now, our chemical equations, they must be balanced. We talked about this a little bit way back in chapter two. It's the law of conservation of mass. So we talked about this with one of Dalton's postulates where atoms, they cannot be created or destroyed. They're simply rearranged. So because of this, chemical equations, they must be balanced. So this law is obeyed. So proper stoichiometric coefficients are needed for balancing. We cannot change the subscripts because if we change the subscripts, we are fundamentally changing the identity of that molecule or of that compound. So we can only change the coefficients. So let's talk about how to balance equations. Now generally, this will require a trial and error approach. Now it will facilitate the balancing process if you do the following things. First, I recommend changing the coefficients of compounds before you change the coefficients of elements. I do also recommend that you treat polyatomic ions that appear on both sides of the equation as units instead of breaking them into their component atoms. This usually makes things a bit easier. And when you first start doing this, I recommend using some sort of little table or chart to count the atoms and or polyatomic ions carefully and track their numbers each time you change a coefficient. So this is gonna take some practice, but as you work at it, you're gonna get quick, uh, your speed is going to improve, and you're not probably not gonna need that chart or that table anymore. You'll just be able to look at the reaction and know what to do. So let's walk through a couple examples. Let's start with an example with propane. So this equation here represents the combustion of propane. So propane plus oxygen gas forming carbon dioxide gas and water. So you wanna start by counting the number of atoms of each type on each side. As you change the coefficients, update the counts. Now for combustions, I recommend you start with CO2 then go to water and then finish with oxygen gas. So start with the compounds that have multiple types of atom in, atoms in them, and then end with the molecule here that just has one type of atom in it. Okay, so let's make our little table. So we've got a table, it's got the three types of atoms in it, carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. So we've got three carbon atoms on the left, eight hydrogen atoms on the left, two oxygen atoms on the left, one carbon on the right, two hydrogens on the right, and three oxygens on the right. 
So I'm going to start by uh, putting in some coefficients here. So put some coefficients in, in front of these formulas, then update the counts for the atoms that changed. Now remember, a coefficient changes the count for all atoms in that compound or in that molecule. So I'm going to start by placing a 3 in front of CO2 because I need, I have three carbons on the left, only one on the right. How do I fix that? I place a three in front of CO2. So now I've got three carbon atoms on the right side. So the carbon atoms are balanced. Now I also have seven oxygen atoms on the right side. So I'm gonna have to fix oxygen later, but first let's tackle water. So I've got eight water atoms on the left, two on the right. So how do I fix that? Well, I need to place a four place a 4 in front of H2O. So now this gives me 8 hydrogen atoms on the right. So now you can see that the carbon and the hydrogen atoms are both balanced. Because of this change, now I have a total of 10 oxygen atoms on the right. 6 from the CO2 and 4 from the water. So now final step here is I'm going to go back to the left side. The carbons and the hydrogens are both balanced, but I've got 10 oxygens on the right, only 2 on the left. So to fix that, I'm going to put a coefficient of 5 in front of O2. This gives me 10 oxygen atoms. So now if you do your count, 3 carbons on both sides, 8 hydrogens on both sides, and 10 oxygens on both sides. So this is a balanced equation, and this is our final answer. Okay, let's look at another example problem. So I could give you a type of problem where I give you the word problem, I don't give you the equation. So you need to write that equation out yourself first. So this says, write and balance the chemical equation for the aqueous reaction of barium hydroxide and perchloric acid to produce aqueous barium perchlorate and water. So you need to remember how to do naming here. So barium hydroxide is BaO, BaOH2, barium is Ba plus 2. Hydroxide is one of our polyatomics, it's OH minus, so we need two of them. Now you need to remember how to name perchloric acid and also barium perchlorate. So perchloric acid, so it, this is a, an oxy acid, it ends in IC. So the original polyatomic ion is perchlorate, which is ClO4 minus. So perchloric acid is HClO4. Barium perchlorate would be Ba parentheses ClO4 two. Since perchlorate is minus one, we need two of them to balance with that plus two barium. And then obviously water is just H2O. So here is our unbalanced equation. Now we need to work on balancing this. Now I do recommend, again, keep polyatomic ions together. So here, you notice that the OH is not together on both sides, so we are going to keep the O and the H separate. However, ClO4 is together on both sides, so I strongly recommend you keep ClO4 together. So when I go to make my table, I would make it like this. I've got barium, I've got oxygen atoms not in ClO4, so these oxygen atoms and these oxygen atoms. I've got hydrogen atoms, and then I've got ClO4 minus. Again, keep that polyatomic together as a unit. It's going to make your life a lot easier. So now when I look at this, well, I've got one barium on both sides. Now my oxygens, my hydrogens, and my chlorates are, perchlorates are all unbalanced. So I would start by balancing perchlorates. So I've got two perchlorates on the right side, only one on the left. So I'm going to place a two in front of HClO4 to balance that. Now I've got two perchlorate ions on both sides. This has now given me four oxygens on the left. So I've got four oxygen atoms on the left. I've also only got uh, two oxygen, or excuse me, four hydrogen atoms on the left, two oxygen atoms on the left. I've got one oxygen atom, not in ClO4, on the right, and two hydrogen atoms on the right. So how do I fix this? Well, I just place a two in front of H2O. This gives me two oxygens on the right and four hydrogens on the right. And now if you look, one barium on each side, two oxygens on each side, four hydrogens on each side, and two perchlorate ions on each side. So this is a balanced equation, and you are done with this question. This is the correct answer. Let's look at one more example, butyric acid. This states, write the balanced chemical equation that represents the metabolism of butyric acid. So here, this is something I would not expect you to know the name of, so you'd be given the reaction. So this is butyric acid, C4H8O2, plus O2 forms CO2 and H2O. So you should notice a theme with combustion reactions that they all involve oxygen gas, carbon dioxide, and H2O. 
So again, with combustion reactions, I recommend starting with those compounds on the right side first, then come back and do O2 later. All right, so let's start with carbon. I've got four carbon atoms on the left, one on the right. So to fix that, I'm gonna place a four in front of CO2. This gives me four carbon atoms on the right. Now I have nine oxygen atoms on the right. Next, I'm gonna to go to hydrogen. I've got eight hydrogen atoms on the left, only two on the right. So I'm gonna place a four in front of H2O. So now I've got eight hydrogen atoms on the right, so I'm balanced there. And now I have a total of 12 oxygen atoms on the right. So the last thing I need to do is I need to balance oxygen. I've got 12 oxygen atoms on the right. I've got four on the left. Now be careful here. Make sure you are paying close attention because you've got two oxygen atoms right here. So let's think about this. I have a total of 10 oxygen atoms on the right. and Or excuse me, 12, 12 oxygen atoms on the right, which means I need 12 on the left side. I've got two from butyric acid here and I don't want to change this coefficient. So if I need 12 on the left side as well, I've already got two in butyric acid. That means I need an additional 10 from oxygen, which therefore means I should place a five in front of O2 here. This gives me 12 oxygen atoms on the left side. So if we double check, four carbon atoms on both sides, eight oxygen atoms on both sides, and a total of 12, or excuse me, eight hydrogen atoms on both sides, sorry, and 12 oxygen atoms on both sides. Okay, so I'm gonna stop here and split this section into two halves. I'll see you in the second half when we get into some fractional intermediates and then we learn about net ionic equations.